With only 87 passengers on board, this baby 747 was ready to bring wide-body aircraft design to the regional plane market. Its nose could open right up and allow passengers to disembark and board in under 5 minutes, and it could land anywhere, from grassy fields, deserts, to busy international airports. But for all of its advantages, it would never see the light of day and would only exist as a fork in the road never taken in the world of aviation. This is the concept only, the Saab 1073. There are many different aircraft manufacturers outside of just Boeing and Airbus, and the one that we'll be talking about today is Scandinavian Saab. Saab is a manufacturer of many different mechanical creations, from cars to aircraft, and in the late 60s, they were a powerhouse of plane designs. They had made a name for themselves building military aircraft, but after World War II, moved on to a variety of other civil projects, including what appears to be a little boat. The fun fact, this boat was actually made of aluminum left over from the war and would quickly disintegrate in the salt water and break apart, getting its nickname, the Civ. Anyway, back to our story. There are two projects that were never built that deserve our attention. The first is the Saab Regional Transport, the 1071, that was a multi-use, quad-rotored, powerful cargo plane that could be fitted to fly 40 passengers to a range of 1,300 kilometers or 863 nautical miles. Clearly, it was the best of the old technology and would have found a use for regional destinations throughout Scandinavia and Europe. The engineers also proposed a smaller version of the same design, officially called a shrink, that could only carry 15 passengers or two tons of cargo. But this wasn't enough for the rapidly growing regional market. The engineers at Saab realized that there was an advantage of bigger aircraft that didn't appear in the market of smaller regional planes. The first using powerful turbofan engines, a new arrival in the market in this era, and also cargo doors. You see, the Boeing 747 has a very unique design feature. Its nose can open right up. This allows it to quickly load entire cargo trains, long objects, and make it incredibly sought after in the cargo carrier market. But this concept has never been used in the regional marketplace on small aircraft until this design. The Saab 1073 was created to bring jet travel to the smaller regional market, but take full advantage of the idea of a no swinging door. When at an airport, the door would open completely by swinging 90 degrees and allow passengers to instantly walk right off the plane, or if a cargo version, allow the pallets to be loaded in a continuous train. This would mean that the cockpit would have to be situated above the main hold and give it its mini 747 design. This would free up extra space in the nose and actually increase the utility of the fuselage from 55%, the average at the time, to 75%. It was powered by twin turbofan engines and designed for short hop routes between regional destinations, like islands or inland cities away from major hubs. Its shoulder-mounted wings allowed for a much lower cabin floor, almost like a truck bed, to ease the loading and offloading of cargo at regional ports that may not have the equipment expected at bigger facilities much like how the C5 Galaxy today can lower its entire fuselage to touch the ground. Because the engines were higher on these wings, it would have less risk to catch foreign objects on takeoff and landing, and thus be suited for airports without asphalt runways like grass, gravel or desert. 
On its tail, its horizontal stabilizer was high to prevent the noise from the jet exhaust on takeoffs and landings. Although, thanks to the engines being right next to the cabin window, it would be just as loud as the typical turboprop today. It was designed to carry around 87 passengers in a 3-3 configuration up to a range of 2,414 kilometers or 1,300 nautical miles. This was a short range, but it was actually made it better for shorter hops, taking off and flying roughly 500 nautical miles before landing again to repeat the whole process, which was a typical shuttle route. These flights would take around about an hour and carry passengers between regional centers and their hubs. The engineers started to get a little bit clever when it came to the passengers' luggage. The passengers' suitcases would have actually been stored in the swinging nose, and passengers would have not had to check in luggage when they arrived at the airport, instead take it on board like a train, placing the luggage in the nose door as they boarded the plane. For longer flights, Saab envisioned a galley in the nose for food and beverages, which would also swing out when it arrived at an airport, as well as more bathrooms at the rear. Lastly, Saab thought that this would be the first of many versions of the plane, thinking of a 100-seater and up to even much higher, perhaps competing themselves with the Boeing 737-100 that had come out only a year before. These other versions would have seen an increased range and more powerful engines. But not only did Saab have an idea for the plane, they also wanted to reinvent the way that airport terminals worked as well. Saab had the very unique idea that a plane would have its own terminal building. The aircraft would arrive at the airport and cruise up to the terminal building that would contain a split terminal foyer. On the left, there would be an arrival hall where passengers would quickly leave in two minutes off the plane and walk through out to another destination. Then a large swinging door would change the access to the plane to the right departure foyer, who would then walk onto the plane, placing their luggage in the nose and then taking their seats. The whole process would take less than five minutes to disembark and load nearly 90 passengers. Saab envisioned that almost every airport in the world would design their airports around this principle, and that we would see this plane fly feeder routes at almost every major hub, forming the backbone of many different regional networks that are today performed by aircraft like Embraer's or turboprops. This plane would have also been very useful to fly to smaller airports within cities like London City Airport and Toronto City Airport that can't take bigger aircraft. It would have allowed business people to commute quickly between downtowns and be a quick commuter shuttle. We also can't deny the military applications of such an aircraft. Its ability to land almost anywhere, carry a hundred troops and supplies, would make it a very useful little craft. It would be fantastic for more remote areas like the islands of Sweden or perhaps throughout Southeast Asia. Its price tag would make it very appealing. I also wouldn't have ruled out a private jet version of this plane. Think of it as the poor man's 747. Coming across the design today and seeing the advantages of this cargo loading process, it's almost strange that a baby 747 hasn't yet been built. It's not entirely clear why the design never went ahead and why manufacturer Saab at the time decided to focus on other projects. Hey, it's Future Nick here, just uh, doing the actual final 3D on this video. I actually did a little bit more research during the editing process, and I discovered why Saab never actually went ahead with it. It turns out that they needed around 300 million Swedish kroner in 1970 dollars to go ahead with the project, and this is around 2.2 
billion US dollars today. And also, they would need help from actually a international company like Boeing or later on Airbus. So that kind of explains why they never actually went ahead with it. I also discovered the final price of the plane would have been around 2.2 million US dollars in 1970 dollars, or today that would be around 15 to 20 million. But we can definitely imagine the impact that this would have had on the aviation industry. This plane design would have come out during the early days of the 747, which we now know to have gone on to have tremendous success. Had this plane been successful, it's possible that it would have nipped into Boeing sales and become perhaps a de facto competitor to all short-range regional aircraft. But it gets a little bit more stewy when you start to think about Airbus. Airbus being a European-wide consortium that wanted to get into the aviation industry around this same time, the success of the Saab 1073 would have been a thorn in their side. Part of the success of the Airbus A320 was because there wasn't really a European competitor to the Boeing 737. Had there already been one in the marketplace, it is possible that Airbus wouldn't have gone ahead with this design, dramatically changing the world of aviation that we love so much. Now, I don't normally give a personal opinion about never built projects, but this is truly one of the biggest missed opportunities in aviation, and it's a shame that it was never built. It would be incredibly flexible, it would have made other models redundant, and been that spark of innovation that we need in the short haul market. Thanks for learning about the baby 747 that could have been. Thanks so much for watching today's video on this little aircraft. It would have not have been possible without the help from Aerospace Projects Review, which publishes incredible journals about forgotten legendary aircraft like this and many more that I have featured on the channel. However, there are so many more that I could never even make in my entire lifetime on this website. So I highly suggest that you stop what you're doing right now and you go check it out and you will be lost down the rabbit hole that I seem to find myself in almost every weekend. Also, I'd like to thank my incredible Patreons who have come together to help fund this video project.